We are at the confluence of the Ohio, Allegheny, and Monongahela Rivers at Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, PA. They love the black and gold here in the Steel City. And a few moments ago, their Steelers emerged from the Heinz Field Tunnel. They're set. We're set as the Steelers are ready to do battle with the Los Angeles Rams. Here we go from Heinz Field as Chris Boswell tees it up and boots it away. And no run back on the opening kickoff. It'll come out to the 25. Now the first carry for Cam Akers. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. <laughs> I know we can't hear what's going on in that huddle right now, but I'll guarantee you at least one offensive lineman is saying, my bad, we simply couldn't move them off the line of scrimmage. We've got to do a better job trying to root those guys out of there. Eight yards to go on second down. Stafford going to give this to Akers. And he'll be tackled at about the 35. What you got? Give him eight yards there. Still a few inches to go, though, as it'll be third down at about the length of the football. An early test for this defense. Here we go on third and inches. A shotgun snap for Stafford. And a dangerous throw there as that's knocked down and incomplete. So the defense able to get off the field here on third down. And it's one of the goals of the game. They've got to be effective on passing downs. It's one of the few things defenses chart. How did we do on third down? That's a nice start for them in this one. On is the punter, Hecker, as he gets this one away. It's a 42-yard punt. They keep him to just a yard on the return. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. And they'll run for the first time with Najee Harris. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. For a lot of people, the MVP award means a quarterback award usually, but over 100 yards again last week. Uh, they're going to have to look his way more than once when giving out this award this season, I think. Yeah, it's not just the consistency. It's been some plays that we've seen, but we talk about it for weeks thereafter. That's what we're getting out of him. Over 100 yards last week. Expects to continue that in this game, too. So quickly, all the way up at the 40-yard line. They run with Harris. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. Well, sometimes it's hard to take your eyes off this guy at the linebacker position. He can really cover some ground, and he did there to make that play. And so much of being a good tackler is understanding and taking the right angles to a ball carrier. And that was just tremendous straight line speed there. He eliminated the angles and was able to meet his man behind the line of scrimmage. He finds his man, Johnson. He finds some open field here. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. A big play that time through the air. 30 yards. 
so often on these RPOs, we see the ball get from the quarterback to the receiver in what feels like a nanosecond, but on this play, he actually cleared coverage downfield a bit before the ball got to him. The net result, though, a considerable gain. Now a first down carry for Harris. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. Again, it's Harris on second down. And this time, they were ready for him as they'll stop him right at the line of scrimmage. This will be a loss of three, and now a much tougher third down looming. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. Throwing on third, gone. And this pass broken up. Now the contact well timed there, and now fourth down. Nice play there to force the incompletion, and to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams think they come in bunches. So that Charles, a season long right there. And you know who's really excited about that? The special teams coordinator, because he's the one who has to tell the head coach in pregame, this is where we trust him from. This distance, he can hit it, and he repaid that trust by knocking that one right through. And this is going to be returned from the middle of the end zone. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked down officially at the 21. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. And the last drive, the first drive for them, not very good. Three and out. What do they go to here? Well, you don't look down at your play sheet and say, this is what the problem is. Now let's find out who my playmakers are. Get the ball in their hands, and maybe the offense will move a little bit Sometimes better. Sometimes it's more important to get it to the right people rather than dialing up the right number. Exactly. Or the, the right play, yeah. That too. <laughs> on second and nine, Stafford. And Rudolph has it left side. It'll be a gain of five, and it'll be third down. It's pretty easy to overlook the fullback when you're making your assignments defensively in the pass coverage game, but in this case, they made him pay for that oversight and picks up a nice game. To throw is Stafford. He'll get this to Akers out of the backfield. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. A big play there on the catch and run. He was not the primary target. They expected to get the ball downfield. Instead, checked it down. An old coach of mine used to say to us all the time, when they check it down, that should end the down. In this case, though, he pulled. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. T.J. Watt, he continues to wreak havoc in the offensive backfield. Sack number 16 on the year. 3-0 after one on EA Sports. Back quite a ways here, facing second and 19. Stafford now to throw. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. The pressure really ratcheting up. They get the sack on first down, then a near sack. They got to him there just as it was leaving his hand. Yeah, they might need to change their pass protection scheme a little bit. Maybe bring another guy into the backfield to help protect the quarterback, because that was awfully close. Well, he's going to go for it all. 
And did he get the feet down? No, they'll say he did not. It's incomplete. There is something to a game plan with trying to keep a defense honest with a guy with that type of speed. You do so. Send him deep. Try to throw some air under it and hope you connect downfield. On that play, they were unsuccessful. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is set away. The field position game, such an overlooked facet, Charles, of an NFL game. But this offense, they're going to be pinned back. What an ideal punt. An ideal punt, and it leads to that term, complimentary football. Because them doing that puts their defense in a great spot, doesn't it? Gives them a chance. If they want to be aggressive, try and maybe get a safety out of this whole thing, it puts them in that position. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown, so a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later, and let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. To throw is gone. And that one goes incomplete on the drop. That's one he definitely normally catches. Fourth down. The Steelers send out their punter now. As his first punt will come from inside his own end zone. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. Yeah, they'll be set up in great starting field position here as that's out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. Now a toss running left, Akers. And the hole closes quickly. He gets it across the 35 to the 36-yard line. T.J. Watt in on the tackle. Brings up second down at the 36-yard line. Throwing on second and long. Stafford sliding out of the pocket toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. And he's only hit on two of his first six passes. Time for a quick quarterback regroup here with a big third down coming up. The Rams on third down, just one for three thus far. This will be a tough third and 18. From the shotgun, here's a give to Akers. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. It'll be a gain of five, and the punt team will now come out on fourth down. Well, the guys who are paid to make the tackles deserve some kudos there, but I think they deserve even bigger ones because in that situation, they had to be thinking pass. Loosened up defense, going to pass coverage. Instead, maybe they surprised them a little bit running the ball, yet they rallied to it and stopped them well short of a first down. It'll be a 41-yard punt, given five on the return. And that will come the offense as they take over. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. 
They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. On second and very short, Goff escaping the pressure right. And Goff picks up the first down and then wisely slides to the ground to avoid the contact. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. A run with Harris out of the shotgun. Stops shy of the 45 despite some powerful running. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. He's definitely tough to get down. We just saw it right there. But how about what we did see? Pursuit, wrap up, and then the big finish with the tackle. Throwing on second and eight, Goff. And the pressure gets there. He'll go down. It's a sack. And it is going to bring us to the two-minute warning. Once we hit halftime, as we do all season, we'll send it down to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have all the stats and scores from games in progress around the NFL. The best multitasker in the business, the coach. Open man completes it to Smith-Schuster. And he can only manage to get this to the 45-yard line, well short of the first. It's a gain of 11, but they're still well short. It's fourth down. The Steelers send out their punter now as he'll kick it away for the second time. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. So possession goes over here on the punt, and the Rams will go on offense here for the first and 10. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. And now with still more than a minute to go in what's been a tight game, you figure we'll try to see them move the ball downfield. And remember, they get the kickoff to start the second half, so this is a golden opportunity for them to go down there and put up a couple of sixes back-to-back. -back. What a momentum swing that would be. Yeah, you might be able to get a two-for-one without ever even giving up the football. A full start backs him up five, first and 15. Stafford going to give the Acres on the draw, and he'll be taken down at the 18. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. Throwing on second and eight, Stafford. That's out to the flat for Acres. And he's able to get up here to the 26. Well, they use him a lot out of the backfield. He had five catches a week ago, and he makes another catch here for good yardage. Stafford looking to throw on third and one. And the catch is made here by Tyler Lockett. The Rams going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as they stop it with 19 seconds to go in half number one. First down at Stafford. He'll dump this off to Akers. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards. Back to the 33. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as they stop it with 11 seconds remaining in this first half. through one man and he'll push forward here for a good little run as the clock continues to run and now they'll take a timeout defensively after the second down play they burn the timeout making him sweat out the final few ticks here in the second quarter well 
this is a new concept. It's third down, but they've got the punt unit on. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. Gets past one man. And yeah, boy, some nifty running, but he's still going to come up about a yard shy. So we've reached halftime here on New Year's Eve. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. In a game where one field goal is all these offenses could muster in the first two quarters, you figure both coaching staffs were needing to make plenty of adjustments. And for the call of the second half, we send it back out to Brandon God. Yes, indeed, Coach. Thanks. Hey, we could use a touchdown. 3 nothing. as we welcome you back in. The final two quarters of the NFL regular season are upon us as the second half of Week 17 is underway. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. The Pittsburgh offense at the line to start their next drive. Their defense has pitched the shutout. Now they probably need to deliver a little breathing room, maybe make it a two-score game as they've got it first and ten. The limited running room as he'll get about three to the 21. Not a whole lot there. The defense was ready, it looked, for that run-pass option. You get the sense that next time he has that opportunity, he may keep it himself and get to the perimeter. Probably owes his back a little bit of an apology on that one, huh? Harris going to get it again on second down. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. You don't see that a ton, do you, with a cornerback coming over to the middle of the field to make a run tackle. That's someone with a ton of confidence to feel like nothing is pressuring him on his side of the field. Sees that the ball's moved to the middle and just sprints over there to help out. He ends up getting the tackle. Well played. Toward the sideline. Did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got them both down, says the side judge. And that's good enough for a first down. A big connection on that one. 33 yards. So the big play moves him all the way across midfield. It's first and 10 from the 45. There's gone. Going top shelf for Smith Schuster. And this is caught. And in for the Steelers. Touchdown. When you think of guys that are built to be big arm quarterbacks, Jared Goff, he fits that mold, and he showed it off right there. Extra point put through by Boswell, and the lead grows to 10-0. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. And here comes a return from the middle of the end zone. And he'll be brought down shy of the 20, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone, not a good one. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. And their deficit a little wider than it was at halftime. Does that touchdown a minute ago change the thinking here at all? I think it does, at least a little bit, because now... Urgency has to start setting in. You can't go out there and go three and out and run the risk of falling behind substantially, but you have to do it without pressing, because pressing, that'll lead you into bigger errors. Here's second and ten. They'll run out of the gun with Akers. And a great move on the play as he takes this one past the 25. 45 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Back to throw, Stafford. He hits his target, lock it. And he takes it down deep into enemy territory. A big play there on the catch and run. Well, we know that he can beat you in a number of ways. He can catch it short, he can take it long, or he can do what we just saw right there, catch it, and then run with the football. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game.
And he's maybe going to get this back to the four, but that's about all. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. They'll come out in the pistol. Second down and goal. Stafford flush to his right. And he's going to go down just outside of the five, right around the six-yard line. It'll wind up going as a sack and a loss of two. And now the task gets more difficult here on third and goal. So backed up to the six now, third and goal. Throwing is Stafford. Forced out. Oh, a hit. He lost the football. Stafford puts it on the ground. And it looks like Steeler football. It is. Holding on to the football becoming a little bit of an issue. He had two fumbles last week, remember? I played for a guy that used to talk all the time about creating turbulence in the pocket, making the quarterback jumpy, make him antsy, keep getting after him a little bit, and make sure he thinks about holding on to the ball because you're going after him. Now left side on the swing pass. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. And this is going to be a Steelers first down as he's able to take this up to the 30-yard line. Decided to hand it off that time on the run pass option. Appeared to be an easy decision. Just gave it inside. Nice steady game. First down, and they go back to Harris. And some room to roam now. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Najee Harris. 70 yards, and the Steelers are going to add on to their lead. Boswell good with the extra point, and that makes our score 17-0. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. And we'll see a return here from the end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. <laughs> Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. And they'll be looking to atone for last time's mistake of fumbling inside the red zone. Certainly they don't want to do that again. And so much emphasis placed on red zone offense. I mean, you have periods devoted in practice just for that because everyone knows how vital it is to put points on the board when you've entered that part of the field. And to come away with nothing, that's difficult for a team to handle. And difficult, and now we'll see if they can make it less difficult on themselves on this drive. To throw again on second down. Stafford flushed out right. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. Well, the terrible towels here at Heinz Field out in full force. Here's third and long. Throwing on third down. Stafford. And the open receiver, it's Robert Woods. And he is going to have a Rams first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Stafford. That's into the hands of 2-2 Atwell. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. Well, that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. Stafford hooking up with Akers. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. Now a first down throw. Stafford. Eluding. And he's going to lose yardage here. 
as they will switch ends as time has run out on this third quarter of play. Back now in Pittsburgh. It's the Rams trailing, but they do have the football as we start the fourth and final quarter. Now then, after the sack, it'll be interesting to see what they have planned for second and 23. Play action. Stafford rolling to his right. It's brought in by Harris. A nice pick up there, 19 yards, and they're set up better for third. And that was yardage that they needed there after the sack on first down. They didn't get all of it back, but now they look at third down as a manageable situation, one that they have a much better chance of picking up. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. Here's Stafford. Now a clash of bodies here, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Justin Lane. And the Steelers are going to get the football back at their own 17. That interception may be the exclamation mark on what really all around has been a good performance. A fantastic performance. They will enjoy film session. Their grade should be very good on this one. And I think the next time the offense gets the ball, I just think about running it and getting the clock done and getting the heck out of here. And by the way, semantics here, but before the grammar police come after me, I think it's exclamation point, not mark, right? You're asking me? Seriously? Yeah, you're smarter than me. Everybody knows that. Listen, I go with what you say, my man. <laughs> Breaks the tackle, he's got room to run. Taking it right down Broadway. And into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Najee Harris, 79 yards. And the Steelers look like they're going to get back in the win column as they extend their lead here in this fourth quarter. Boswell for the extra point. And the lead is now 24. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. And this will be brought out from the middle of the end zone. And he'll be brought down shy of the 20, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone, not a good one. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. And let's face it, this drive is not going to have any bearing on this game, but it's kind of important for one reason, isn't it? It certainly is. you got to get points. And okay, all right, I'm being facetious here. But you get points, you feel a little bit better about yourself as you move on to the next one. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Well, your QB's been sacked four times in the game already. And they're the holding goal. And you know darn well the offensive line coach is frustrated and upset that he's been hit that many times already. He doesn't really care that they hold now. Just don't let him get hit anymore. Buying time to his left. Going up top for Cup. Throw across his body and it's intercepted. Picked off by Justin Lane. And the Steelers are going to get the football here as he gets this up to the 38-yard line. Gosh, you add up last week and this week now. That's nine interceptions in this two-game stretch, and we're not done here. It's almost as if they can't even believe their eyes. Or maybe, partner, is the confidence level in him so high that they believe he'll get out of it and make plays for them to win a game. Well, they've said they believe in him. That's being tested right here. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. They run again with Harris. Able to fight through one tackle. Solid move, but he's corralled just beyond the 40. Give him three yards, and now they're left needing a conversion here on third and six. He sees, he sees. 
Going top shelf for Smith-Schuster. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. And into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Juju Smith-Schuster. His second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Steelers extend this fourth quarter lead, and they are getting closer and closer to win number 11. Extra point put through by Boswell. And that will extend this big lead. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. And this is going to be returned from the middle of the end zone. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play caller because a one-play drive where you throw an interception, a lot of people think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action? I think maybe you go play action, show your quarterback, get a little confidence in him, and let him fling another one. So quickly, all the way up at the 40-yard line. Now Stafford. And his throw here is incomplete. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Now it's Stafford. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked up by Mika Fitzpatrick. And the return here will go to the 31-yard line. The utter domination here just continues. This defense, I don't know what more we can say all around about their performance. Well, it certainly feels, in this game, like maybe they're facing a Canadian defense. Twelve guys on the <laughs> field. It feels like there's an extra on every snap because it really... And he will get into the end zone. It's another touchdown. This thing is ugly. Even though they've got this big advantage, Charles, they are not taking their foot off the gas pedal right now. Well, I think what we're seeing is the result of all their great preparation and great practice time during the week. And even though it seems like this is a great chance to pull people back and maybe, you know, not try and score a few more times, they don't want to do that. I think they're enjoying what they're seeing, the collective effort, and they want to play it all the way out. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. And here comes a return from the middle of the end zone. In this position, trying to get back into the game. Teams are looking for a spark from their special teams. That's not what they got, though. They got a setback, and they have a long field to cover if they want to try and put points on the board. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack him here. Off the fake to Akers. Here's Stafford. Dancing to his left. Pressure gets to him, and down he goes. Back at the four-yard line. Alex Highsmith in there to get him. And on the season now, that is nine sacks for him. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Rams football here as we get you reset. They face a third down now as they try to find a late score. And they'll hustle up to stop him well shy of the first, right around the 15. And now with 1.52 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Desperation time for Stafford on fourth down. 
And they're going to set up shop at the 27-yard line. CD, this defense, I mean, at this rate, they're just having fun out there right now. And normally with this type of a lead, if you're a starter on defense, you're saying, hey, let the other guys play. But with this going on, no one wants to come out of the game. They all want their shot at picking off a pass. On first down, Harris. Down he goes at the 23, a pickup of four. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Six yards left on second down. They'll run again with Harris. He'll have a first down inside the 10. And they are going to score again. Yet another touchdown as they just add to their totals. As that lead just swells and swells. Look, this has been dominance in all three phases. Offense, defense, and special teams. So don't we have to give a lot of credit, not just to what we've seen today, but the preparation in advance, coaching staff, commitment by the players to the game plan, and being ready to go in this one? You're exactly right. Clean sweep. And boy, are they going to celebrate this one after it's over. And on the other side, this is the game film. You just flush and never go back and review. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. And this will be brought out from the middle of the end zone. And he'll be brought down shy of the 20. So the decision to bring it out of the end zone, not a good one. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. Let's just be frank, they're playing for pride at this point. <laughs> that's, that's all that's left because victory, not a chance now. And I can't wait to see how they actually go about doing it because there are a lot of people watching the body language of the guys on the field now. And if they call plays they want executed, they need to do that and do it really well. Otherwise, there could be repercussions. We'll see how they handle the waning moments of this one. And he drops it incomplete. And their struggles continue here. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball. And they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. They'll check this down to Akers out of the backfield. And they will rally and stop him short of the first down. They get him to the ground at the 26. If this were baseball, we'd call this small ball. Instead of pushing it downfield, they throw a short pass trying to pick up the first down. But the defense rallies to the football and stops him short, bringing up a fourth down. They snap it to Stafford. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Steelers, they're going to take over an excellent field position. They'll run on first down. Harris powers through it. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he will get into the end zone. It's another Bye. touchdown. This thing is ugly. Well, this is long since over, and some might see this as overkill, but remember... This is a team that puts on the hard hats, grabs the lunch pail, and tells everyone, we're going to give you a full 60 minutes. And that's exactly how they're playing this one out. Extra point now by Boswell. And this one was over a while ago as they just add on to their big lead. well now to kick it away after the touchdown and this is going to be returned from the middle of the end zone and that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one cost him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20 
Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. They can't do much at this point, partner. This one is going to go down in the loss column. You don't make up for what has happened during the game in this sequence here. Maybe you hand it off and let someone run the ball if you, if you so choose. But otherwise, just kneel down, call it a day, and try and prepare going forward. Well, this has not been going the way that he thought prior to the game. Probably figured he'd be able to throw a few more downfield, but he's having to run around for his life back there. They've already gotten to him a number of times. They'll keep coming after him in the pass rush. My advice, shorter passes. Get the ball out of your hand. And one of the whistles for a timeout. So they'll stop the clock here in a game that's been decided in the closing seconds. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. And able to use his blockers to get this up over the 40. Oh, wait, hold everything. A timeout has been called. Seemingly silly with one second remaining in this game. Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. And that play goes nowhere. He's met behind the line, and a penalty flag may add insult to injury. Well, they had stopped him for a loss on the run anyway, so they'll decline that. It's almost a good psychological advantage, isn't it? You created a penalty, and you still couldn't gain yards against us. No way we need to take that one. So this one in the win column for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I tell you what, Charles, this might be about as good as it gets. They were incredible. Yeah, offense was in fine form. The defense threw the shutout at them. I think they worked in concert together. What I like about the offense was they held the ball pretty well. You know, time of possession, exactly what they were looking for in this one. And that helped out their defense. Didn't have to be out there the entire time. So when you do that and you're out there fresh playing, off a little extra spring in your step, and it showed up in this one. They had a ton of spring in their step. Impressive victory. So for the Steelers, they improved to 11-5 now with one week remaining.